A new discovery has emerged, not from a telescope, but from a ripple, not from a star, but from the tension of space itself. Scientists at the European Gravitational Array in Chile, operating in collaboration with LIGO and Virgo, have detected what may be the oldest gravitational wave event ever recorded, and its source lies not in black hole mergers, but in something stranger. A hypermassive star cluster, billions of light years away, is shaking the fabric of the cosmos. And we're just beginning to understand what it means. Before we dive in, if unraveling the mysteries of space excites you like it does us, consider subscribing, liking this video, and sharing your thoughts below. This story is far from over, and your voice is part of it. The signal arrived quietly. A low-frequency wave, out of sync with previously cataloged collisions. It was long, smooth, less violent than expected. At first, researchers thought it was a glitch in the interferometer, a seismic artifact, or noise from terrestrial interference. But it didn't match anything local. It had all the signatures of a gravitational wave, but one that had traveled so far, it had stretched and slowed into a whisper. Its origin? A luminous region near the observable limit of the universe, a glowing haze first imaged by JWST only months earlier. The galaxy, designated CLZ 1789, was already a candidate for unusual formation behavior due to its redshift and brightness. Now, with the gravitational wave aligned in time and space, CLZ 1789 has been reclassified as a protocluster and possibly the host of the earliest multi-body stellar collision ever seen. The wave itself told a story, a slow, deep oscillation, like a giant bell struck underwater. It didn't speak of black holes colliding. It spoke of stars, massive, ancient stars, spiraling into union inside a tightly packed region of space. A region so dense, so hot, and so gravitationally potent it may represent an entirely new category of astrophysical object, a gravitational cradle. Using simulations based on the waveform's distortion, researchers reverse modeled the source cluster's mass and age. The numbers came back unsettling. The stars inside were not just large, they were too large. Estimates placed the mass of several bodies inside the cluster above 400 solar masses beyond the limits of stability in current star formation theory. How can something that big exist in the early universe? And more importantly, how can multiple such objects form so close together without annihilating one another? That's the question now rewriting our models. CLZ 1789 is now at the center of an astrophysical storm. JWST has focused its deep field array toward its coordinates and begun building the most detailed composite map ever attempted at such distance. And what it's seeing contradicts nearly every known assumption. Instead of an unformed protogalactic cloud, it's detecting layered stellar populations. Instead of random gas dispersion, it's observing filamentary networks of dust and plasma, structured like veins, not chaos. Even more bizarre, there are gravitational lensing effects within the cluster, suggesting objects of enormous mass weaving space-time around themselves, possibly intermediate mass black holes hidden inside. So, what are we looking at? There are three competing theories. Theory 1. Ancient mergers. These gravitational waves are remnants of hypermassive stars merging in the early universe, the kind of events thought to be impossible under the short time frames post Big Bang. If true, it means star formation was much more efficient than we've ever considered. Theory 2. Exotic matter collapse. Some suggest these stars formed not from standard hydrogen fusion processes, but from exotic matter clumping under early universe conditions, a scenario involving quark-gluon plasma cooling into supermassive star-like cores before fragmenting into stars. Theory 3. Primordial seeding. The most controversial theory, that a previous generation of hyperstructures seeded gravitational nodes that gave rise to clusters like CLZ 1789, essentially implying intelligence, or at minimum, artificial enhancement in the early fabric of space. None of these options are comfortable. Even if we rule out artificiality, we're left with a powerful revelation. The early universe may not have been chaotic and slow to mature. It may have been fertile, fast, and structured, 
galaxies birthing galaxies in a matter of hundreds of millions of years. Star clusters forming like fractals. Gravity not as a slow shaper, but as an active sculptor. And if this is true, what else formed before we were ready to look? There's something unsettling about realizing the cosmos may have organized itself faster than we did. If clusters like CLZ 1789 were forming complex, gravitationally bound structures this early, then everything we've built around cosmic timelines may be off by a margin we're not yet prepared to admit. But the gravitational wave was only the beginning. As JWST refined its focus, something else emerged in the spectroscopic data, a signature that shouldn't be there. A fluctuation in photon delay across regions of space that should be evenly illuminated. This was a noise. It was a ripple, baked into the background light itself. Scientists call it differential lensing bias, but it reads like a message, light bent in ways that suggest not just mass distortion but coordinated layering. In other words, a shape. Not a random arrangement of stars, but a coherent, symmetric gravitational blueprint. Not one made by us. Not one even visible in the traditional sense. But embedded, like architecture beneath water, in gravity itself. If that sounds like science fiction, consider this. Gravity is not a force. It's a geometry, a warping of space by mass. And what's now forming in CLZ 1789, at the edge of observability, is a pattern of mass arranged so symmetrically it could be mistaken for intention. Three dense cores arranged in equilateral triangulation. Arcs of matter between them. Equal lensing intensities. The odds of this occurring naturally? So low, most cosmologists wouldn't put it on paper. And yet it's there. And it's growing. So, what are we looking at? Not a galaxy. Not a star. Not even a black hole but a structure made of gravity, possibly a gravitational resonance system so massive it's shaping light across billions of years of travel. Some researchers, off the record, have begun calling it the resonator, a term borrowed from quantum physics now applied to the largest known object in the sky. Because inside CLZ 1789, the frequency of the gravitational wave appears to sync rhythmically with subharmonic echoes in the cosmic microwave background. That's not supposed to happen. Background radiation is supposed to be random noise, a residual hum from the Big Bang. But if the data is right, then something in this region of space is playing with it, modulating the fundamental tone of the universe like a stringed instrument. And the deeper the arrays dig, the clearer the notes become. Now, a question no one wants to answer is circulating behind closed doors. What if the gravitational wave wasn't the signal, but the result of the signal being received? Like a bell struck in response. In this theory, CLZ 1789 is not the sender, but the resonator of a much older message that rippled through space and activated a gravitational response. In this theory, we just witnessed it ringing. Not metaphorically. Literally. This isn't just poetic speculation. There's precedent. In the way stars pulse, in the way black holes ring after collision, in the tidal flex of neutron stars under mutual gravity. But this, this is on another scale. We're seeing gravitational harmonics in structured formation, intelligent seeming arrangements of mass, synchronized to quantum level interference patterns in light. As though something engineered silence and then struck it to speak. Of course, not everyone agrees. Many astrophysicists warn against what they call anthropic illusion, the tendency to see intent in systems that simply follow the rules of chaos. They caution that the early universe was bound to produce rare anomalies and that CLZ 1789 may be just that, rare but natural. But even the skeptics agree, the gravitational wave didn't lie, and the lensing symmetry didn't happen by chance. So where do we go from here? JWSD will continue to monitor the region. A proposed follow-up mission, codenamed CHORUS, would launch a gravitational interferometer into high orbit specifically tuned to low-frequency cosmological waves. Its sole purpose? To track and map gravitational echoes from the early universe. But here's the deeper truth. Whatever happened in CLZ, 1789, already happened 13 billion years ago. We're just seeing it now. The light is old, the wave is older, the object 
may not even exist anymore. Or maybe it does. Maybe it's still there, beyond our reach, but shaping everything behind the curtain of time. Maybe the echoes are still spreading across the cosmic web, across the void, across the silence. And maybe we've only heard the first note. This universe was never silent. It's always been humming, in light, in heat, in gravity. We just weren't listening the right way. If this discovery stirred something in you, let us know. What do you think CLZ 1789 really is? A fluke, a relic, or a message carved into mass itself? Subscribe to stay with us as we follow the echoes. Like this video if it helped bring the cosmos just a little closer. Because in the end, gravity doesn't just pull, it speaks.